Okay, let's go to File and then Open Scene, and let's open up Bender Start. All right, so here we have our uh, front reference image and our side reference image. So let's start by working on the body right here, which we'll use a cylinder for. So I'm going to go up here to my polygon shelf and click on the cylinder button right here. I'll press W and move this up in the panel here. And let's see, I'm going to just tap the spacebar over the perspective panel. And let's go to Window and then Rendering Editors and then Hypershade. So right here I've got my materials for the front view and the side view reference images and then I've also got a, a Lambert 4 right here that's just a transparent material. I'm gonna take that material and drag it onto the cylinder here. So I'm gonna hold down the middle mouse button and then drag this over. Okay, and I'll just minimize the hypershade for now. Alright, so let's see here. I'm gonna go to the uh, front panel here and I'm just gonna move this up and I'll hit R and just scale it up slightly. And actually, I'm going to move it back down a little bit. I'll right click on this object, go to vertex, select all of the vertices at the bottom of the cylinder here, and move them down. And then I'm going to press R for my scale tool. And I'm going to make sure I scale in from the center. This is very important. If you scale in using this red box right here, it'll scale along X only. So you want to make sure you scale in on this on the yellow box in the center here, and that's going to scale on X and Z at the same time. Alright, I'm going to right click and go to face, and I'm going to click and drag a box around the top of the cylinder here, and then I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag a thin marquee right along the middle here. So I just unselected all the faces in the middle, but if you look at the cylinder at the top here, I still have all the faces at the top selected. Okay, those are the faces that I want to extrude. So I'm going to go up to go back to my front panel here and hit the extrude button on the shelf and go up. Press R for my scale tool and scale this in. Okay, let's right click, go to object mode, and let's name this body. Alright, I'm going to add another cylinder here, and this is going to be the head, so let's move that up. Let's go back to our hypershade and take our Lambert 4 right here, hold down the middle mouse button, and drag it onto the cylinder. And then I'll minimize the hypershade. I'm going to press R for my scale tool and I'll make sure that I scale from the center. That's the yellow box right here. Okay, I just want to fit it with the guidelines for the outside of the head here. So now I'm going to right click, go to vertex, and I'll select all the vertices on the bottom here, press W, and move them down. And now I'm going to right click and go to face. I'm going to select the faces at the top here that also selects the faces on the side so I'll hold down shift and click and drag a marquee around these faces in the middle. Now I have just the faces on the top of the cylinder selected and I'm going to hit extrude up here on the shelf move these faces up, press R and scale them in Hit extrude again and go up. Oops. Let's try that again. Press R and scale them in from the center. Hit extrude one more time. Go up. Press R and scale in. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, dolly in. And we're going to do the same process again for his antenna. So I'm going to hit extrude, go up press R and scale in, hit extrude again, go up, press R and scale in, hit extrude and I'll go up and press R and then scale in a little bit more. And I think I want one more edge loop here so I'm going to go to edit mesh 
and then insert edge loop tool and add an edge loop right in here and then press R and just scale that out slightly. For the top of the head let's use a sphere. So I'm just going to click on this button right here for a polygon sphere. We'll have to zoom out to find that. Press W and move this up along the Y axis and uh, press R and then we'll scale down from the center and let's hit F F to frame that sphere and we'll move it back down and hit R and scale it down yeah something like that and I'll frame it again and it looks pretty close to what we want for his antenna all right, so now I'm going to tap the space bar and go to the uh, perspective panel here and see what we have. So at this stage, I want to be able to see the edges on the model. So I'm going to go up here and click on this button. It's a gray box with black uh, a black outline. So I'll click on wireframe on shaded here. And now we can see the edges uh, on our object. OK. So I'm going to go back to, actually let's go to the side panel here and let's add some edge loops on this helmet here, on his head. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then I'll go to Insert Edge Loop Tool and I'm going to insert an edge loop right here at the top of his visor and one at the bottom of his visor. And then let's insert an edge loop at the top of his mouth and at the bottom of the mouth. And let's see here. Let's do one more edge loop here and then I'll press R and just scale this out slightly. Okay, so now I'm going to press Q for my selection tool. Um, and basically what I want to do is I want to select two edges on the side of the head. So it's this edge that's kind of right past the edge of the outline for the visor. So I want those two edges. So you can see over here, those are the two edges that I want to select. So I'm going to press R and scale these down. And then I'm going to right click, go to face, and I'm going to select, first I'll hit Q for my selection tool. So I'm going to select this face here, hold down shift, select the next face, and go all the way across the front here so we can extrude out his visor. Okay. So I'm going to hit extrude. And instead of going straight out with this blue arrow, I'm going to press W. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to extrude forward, going along the z-axis without the faces expanding out in any other direction. Okay. So from here, I'm going to press R and use the blue box to scale these faces together. Not all the way, but pretty close. And then I'm going to press extrude again up here. Press W for my move tool and move these faces out again. And this time I'll press R and scale them all the way so that they are completely flat. So that means this yellow box is going to go right over the light blue box. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to my side panel and check and make sure that this is lining up. If it's not lining up, just simply move these faces so that it lines up with the reference image. Okay, let's add one more edge loop going th right through the middle here. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool and we'll go right through the middle here. Actually, let's try that one more time.
Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to unselect a bunch of these edges. So I'm going to press Q for my selection tool. I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard and I'm going to click and drag and unselect all of these edges on towards the back of the head. So basically right now all I have are the edges um, on the front and on the two side faces here. So I'm going to take this, press R for my scale tool and scale these out. Just to round out that visor a little bit more. Alright, so I'm going to press Q for my selection tool and I want to select all these faces here on the front. So it looks like this is not unselecting. So if this ever happens, you have these faces that are um, not unselecting. That's just a bug in Maya and you can uh, save your work and restart Maya. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and select these faces. So what I'll do, oh there we go. Now they're unselecting. Okay. So I'm going to hold down shift and select all the faces on the front here. Okay. I'll press extrude once and then I'm going to click on this blue box or the red or the green one of them just click and let go and then I'll click on this light blue box in the center and just click and drag to scale it in and now I think we want to even this out so I'm going to use the red box and scale in a little bit more and use the green box to go back up Okay, so I'm going to go to Edge here. Actually, I'm going to go to Vertex and manually edit this a little bit. Take these two vertices towards the edges, press R and scale them in slightly. And now I'm going to take these, actually, let's go take these two vertices here, scale them out slightly. And I think what I'll do is right click, go to edge, and I'm going to select I'm going to press Q for my selection tool. It's a little bit easier to select then. Take these edges here. Press R and just go in a little bit. Scale in slightly. All right. So I'm going to go back and select these faces on the front here. Press extrude and I'll press W and move these straight back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you can see on the side here the goggles kind of go out the side of his head. So let's see if we can take the faces here on the top panel. I'm going to select these faces here. And let's see if we can scale them out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to actually let's select these, this face here, double click on the face next to it, press R and scale this out. There we go. All right. So now let's work on the mouth. 
So I'm going to right click and go to edge and select by using a marquee selection this edge right here and bring that down. And then I'll right click, go to face and select these faces right here. Press extrude. And I'll just click on this blue box and then scale from the center here. And I'm going to press actually R and let's see, I'll scale in, kind of flatten this out a little bit. Press W and move this back. And press R and just scale this in a little bit along the Y axis. And there we have his mouth. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the body and the head. We're just going to add some edge loops in here before we smooth everything out. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'll add an edge loop at the front of the visor on the outside and one on the inside. And then an edge loop right here on the edge where the visor meets with the head and uh, maybe one on the inside right here and then for the, uh, the the mouth right here let's add an edge loop up here one at the bottom so one on, on the top side of the mouth and the bottom side of the mouth one at the bottom of the head here And let's see, we'll do one here and one right here. And let's see, that should probably be okay. And then let's add an edge loop right here on either side of the beginning of his antenna. Transition between that one edge loop at the top of this dome and one at the beginning of the in, the rest of the antenna, and then one up here. Okay, so let's go to our hyper shade and let's take Lambert one and drag it on here. And now we'll just uh, smooth this out and see what it looks like. So let's go to Mesh and then Smooth. Let's see here. Let's try that one more time. Mesh and then Smooth. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Let's turn off our wireframe on shaded. Yep, that'll work. Okay. And let's switch to the body here and let's add some edge loops here. So I'll go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'm going to add one at the top here and then one on either side here to transition. And then uh, let's see, we'll add one at the bottom. Actually, add, let's add two. And we'll take this edge loop at the bottom here. I'll hit Q, double click to select it, press R, and just scale it in slightly to round that out. And let's see here. Let's do the same thing at the top. I'll go to Edit Mesh. Insert Edge Loop Tool, we'll add one more edge loop, press Q, double click on this top edge loop, 
press R and scale that in slightly. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this, go to object mode. I'll take my uh, Lambert 1, hold down the middle mouse button and drag it onto the object. And then we can hide our hypershade for now. So right here, I'll go in here and go to mesh and then go to smooth. We'll smooth that out. So I've got the body and I've got the head. Let's rename this from P cylinder one to the head. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's place two eyes up here inside the visor here for for Bender. So I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm sorry, a sphere. And I'll just drag this up. And let's go to the front panel here. I'll press R and we'll scale this down and move it over. And let's go to the side panel. I'll press 4. Let's bring this uh, sphere out and we'll scale it down some more. We'll place it inside the visor here. Maybe scale it up a little bit more. Let's press Control D or Command D to duplicate. So there we've got uh, two placeholders for his eyes. All right, this is a good place to save your work if you haven't already saved. So let's go to File, Save Scene As, and we'll call this Bender Stage 1. And then I'll hit Save here. All right, so now let's start working on his arms here. So I'm going to create a polygon pipe right here. And I'll press W and move this up. Press E and I'll rotate it 90 degrees. So that's rotate Z is going to be 90. And let's call this, instead of P-pipe 1, let's call this arm socket. All right, so let's go down to our inputs for the polypipe one, and let's try a radius of 0.4, and a height of one, thickness 0.1, let's see if we can see this. I'm gonna turn off the visibility on our reference image here for a second. So our thickness is 0.1, subdivision axis is 20, and that looks okay. So let's move this in and down, in, and let's actually turn our reference back on. Let's see here. So I'll right click, go to vertex, select the vertices here, press R and scale those down. I'm going to press 4 on the keyboard and I'll select these vertices here then I'll press 6. I just want to scale these up a little bit and there we have our arm socket. So I'll right click on this and go to object mode. All right, now for the arm we're just going to create a cylinder so let's click on this button right here for the polygon cylinder and I'll move this up. We'll rotate on Z 90 degrees. And let's scale this down. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the inputs for this poly cylinder 3. And let's change the height to maybe 14. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks about right. So I just pressed 4 to go to wireframe, and now I'll press 6 to go back to shaded. 
or show, displaying textures, right? And let's see, the height is going to be 14. Let's do a subdivision height of 6. And let's just call this arm left. Actually, this is his right arm because we are facing him. So we'll call that arm right. Uh, let's see, we need another few cylinders over here. So I'll create another cylinder. Bring this up and we'll rotate it on the Z axis 90 degrees. And I'll scale it. Let's see, actually, we need to scale it a lot more. So I'm going to go to Vertex, select all the vertices on the outside here. Actually, before we do that, let's just take this and duplicate it. So I'll hit Command-D or on a PC, Control-D, move this over. And then I can go back in here. We'll scale this up slightly. Go to Vertex and we'll move these in. Press R and scale them up. There we go. Let's take these. These are going to be the fingers and let's scale them down. And let's go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool and let's insert an edge loop right here. And then we'll hit Q and double click on this edge right here, press R and scale down. So I'll right click, go to Object Mode. So let's see here, let's name this stuff. This is going to be Hand Right. This is going to be Finger. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll duplicate this. So I'll hit uh, Command D or on a PC Control D. Move this down, and let's see here how many. So I'm going to turn off the um, reference images here, and let's just take these two fingers and move them to the outer edge here. I'll take one of the fingers, hit Command D to duplicate, and then move this up and kind of form a little triangle here. So let's see, we'll go to the side panel and line this up as best we can. So there we have, let's see, I can just hit F you can see you just want the fingers to be towards the edge of the uh, of the circle here okay so let's go to our front panel and let's turn our reference images back on the next step we're going to do is create the feet. This is actually going to be pretty easy. We're just going to create a sphere and move this over. And basically what we're going to do is right click on the sphere and go to vertex. And I'm going to select all of the vertices on the bottom half of this cylinder. Okay. So I'll press R and I'm going to scale all of them together. Scale them all flat and then press W and move them all up. And I'll press R and scale them in slightly. Let's move them up a little bit more. 
So now I'll right click on the whole object and go to object mode. Press R, scale the whole thing down, and we'll just move this into place for his foot. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the modeling process here. Now you might say, well, what happened to his legs here and his other arm and stuff? And what we're going to do is basically we'll go in and I'm going to add all the textures onto this model. And then I will duplicate the arm after I put the texture on down here for the leg. So we're basically done with the modeling process. So we'll switch over to Sketchbook Pro and paint the textures that we need. And then we'll come back to Maya and put everything together.